My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, we had left Muna 3 sitting on the moon's surface, and I said that I had a plan for it. Before we get to that, we'll get to that in just a moment, um, I'm going to do some adjustments to my strategies. Actually, specifically, I'm deleting them. And the reason I'm deleting them is because, well, I had 90% of my reputation being converted into funds and into science, which felt like a good idea to me until somebody pointed out in the comments that, well, you know, reputation does determine the quality and quantity of the contracts that you get. Well, that was news to me, and it actually kind of explains why I've been not getting as good contracts as I thought I should be getting by this point. So, uh, yeah, I just went through and deleted them. I might even um, get into getting some strategies together that it might convert either science or funds or both into reputation to kind of make up a bit for lost time. But uh, in the meantime, let's get ourselves out to Muna 3. Now, part of the original mission was for Muna 3 to land and then return back to the surface of Kerbin. But that part of the mission had to be aborted because of my really inept planning, leaving me with a lander that has nowhere near the Delta V required in order to get it back to Kerbin. So I had to forget on that part of it, and I let that go. And uh, you might recall from the last episode that uh, another part of this mission also went poorly in that I was collecting seismic data using an impactor and the interstellar mod, and that data got lost when uh, during transmission when I ran out of electricity. So uh, at that time I went, well, that's, that's pretty sad, but I do have a plan to still make some use out of this. And the plan, the idea here, while I go around scrounging to make sure that I have transmitted all the science from this biome that I can, the plan, well, I'll get to the plan in just a second, because actually something else caught my attention. This thing still has about 472 meters per second of delta V left. And I am pretty sure right around here, this, this part here, I'm pretty sure is the a canyon's biome. So if I can get the lander over there, I can uh, scoop up quite a bit more science. Now, I did do a suborbital hop on the moon with Muna 2, which is the lander that's on the other side of the moon. This was quite a lot of episodes ago. I successfully hopped it to another biome. Um, that one cost me about 570 meters per second, but I mentioned at the time that I thought that was uh, more expensive than it should be. So I got it into my head to let's see if I can get myself over to those canyons. Now to help myself along, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Waypoint Manager. Uh, this is a mod that allows you to put uh, waypoints uh, for you to follow. And you can put in custom waypoints. I'm just sort of moving this around to a point that is a little more convenient for me to see. And you can put in custom waypoints by playing around with the longitude and latitude. So it didn't take a lot of playing around for me to get a waypoint in around where I'm hoping to land. And while I'm playing around with this, uh, I wanted to describe what the second part of my plan is. The second part is, you know, uh, Moon 3 is not too far from the equator of the moon. If I send another uh, probe out here, uh, would be in a couple of parts, a few stages. One would be a stage to drop a light probe with a seismic sensor and, and other science equipment um, onto one of the poles. And then... Uh, set up an impactor that, that could be in, just leave it in orbit. And then at some point in the future, I would do a manned mission, land 90 degrees from where Muna 3 is. And if you recall, when I did the seismic sensing on Kerbin, this was the sort of setup of the seismic sensors with all the seismic sensors about 90 degrees to each other. And then um, with the man lander, I could collect that science and just take it back to Kerbin. Or maybe not even a manned lander, maybe a proper lander that actually can return to Kerbin. And then I don't have to worry about the transmitting of all of that data. So uh, that seemed like a good mission for the future that would still use this. But the first step of that is to uh, get this thing over to the canyons. Now one of the things that I hoped would make this particular suborbital hop more efficient than the last time I did this uh, is one is to have that waypoint so that I can aim for and get my uh, aim right at it. The other thing I'm doing is making my uh, my ascent angle 
much more shallower than it was before. Last time I think I got my apoapsis up too high and that uh, I think affected the efficiency. So this time I'm trying to keep myself uh, aimed fairly low. I'm trying to keep myself on the prograde vector and I'm just pushing until my uh, trajectory is putting me into the canyons. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, maybe I should abandon the idea of making it over to there. Yeah, you might have noticed that my trajectory is actually coming a little bit short of the waypoint, uh, but I think it's still in the canyons. But, oh dear. Oh dear, if you take a look at what Kerbal Engineer is telling me, it's telling me I only have about 173 meters per second left. And I started with about, with 472, so I've already burnt up more than half my fuel. And thanks to the wonderful symmetry of Newtonian mechanics, uh, I should be burning as much fuel to stop myself as I burnt to get myself up here. Which means I'm pretty sure I'm doomed. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to... No, this is not going to go well. Okay, well, let, uh, I might as well go for it. So let's first adjust my trajectory a bit. I'm burning a little bit uh, normally perpendicular to my trajectory to get my landing spot into the canyons. Uh, but I am almost positive I do not have enough fuel to stop myself on the other side. In fact, well, I'm going to go for it anyways. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe something, maybe, maybe this thing won't entirely be destroyed, right? I mean, all I, I need the probe body to survive. I need the seismic sensor and hopefully even more of the science equipment to survive. I also need the communitron to survive. I don't think that parachute that's up at the top is going to help me. That looks really stupid now. Oh, dear. To be honest, I'm not terribly upset about this. I mean, it's an unmanned craft. If there were Kerbals in this thing, uh, there's no way I would have done this. Uh, no way I would have run this risk. So this is kind of an experiment, and I did learn something. I learned that my shallow uh, suborbital hop is stupid. <laughs> it's definitely way less efficient than the um um uh the the steeper suborbital hop and I should have known this. I should have known it because believe it or not, uh I do have a bachelor's degree in physics and from high school physics if you are doing a ballistic trajectory. I'm not going into an orbit, but a ballistic trajectory, your most efficient angle for launch is 45 degrees. I should know that. I should have known that. And now, of course, I know that, and it's too late. Oh, I'm getting really close to the surface. Uh, screw it. Let's burn the rest of this. Let's get my velocity down as low as I can. Yeah, 45 degrees is the most efficient ballistic trajectory. If you're going into an orbit, it's a different thing. An orbit is all about picking up horizontal velocity. But a, a, a suborbital ballistic trajectory like this, it's not about velocity at all. Okay, so there we go. We are dead, out of fuel, and still going at well over 110 meters per second. Oh, I don't think this is going to go well. But, uh, let's see how it goes. Trying to see if I can take it with the landing and... Oh, arr! Ooh. Well, that blew up even more. Oh, we do have some debris over there. What's left? Let's see if I can get over there. Oh, wait, no, stuff's exploding. Oh, something seemed to have soft landed over there. Maybe I can get over there. I can see from Kerbal Engineer I was at least right that this is the canyons. I am in the canyons biome, and this is all that's left. <laughs> this lone landing strut sliding down into the canyon. Uh, oh, well, well, like I said, not a big deal. I learned something about suborbital trajectories, so Eve, any mistake that you learned from, well, it's not really a mistake at all, right? I'll take that positive attitude and move on. Here we are in the vehicle assembly building, and what you see me working on is another interplanetary relay that I plan on putting into a geostationary orbit so I can communicate with my interplanetary probes 
Uh, specifically, my probe that's on its way out to Duna right now that I can't communicate at all because I do not have an antenna to communicate with it. And uh, my Moho mission, which I talked about last episode, which will be launched, well, not this episode, but in a future episode. But I thought I would use this opportunity to talk about uh, what else is coming up in this video. Um, main event, I suppose, is going to be the installation of a docking hub on our Kerbin station, our station that's in low Kerbin orbit. Um, and that's gonna mostly feature using the struts that are part of Kerbal attachment system to try and uh, strengthen it up a little bit. So uh, that will be coming up shortly. But what I wanna show you first of all is this is actually the first time I've had to use the root tool. Um, Every Kerbal craft, every craft in Kerbal Space Program has a root part. And it's, by default, the very first part that you, um, that you put into your build. Usually it's like a, a pro body or a command capsule or something like that. Um, but you have the ability to change it. And here I want to change it because I want to make this part, uh, this craft, sorry, par part of another craft. Because I want to have a craft to carry two of these. But in order to do that, I need to make the root part the part that I want to be the attachment point for this craft. And that part is going to be the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach on a decoupler to the bottom of the engine. And then I'm going to select the root tool here. And it says, select a set of two or more parts. So I'll select the decoupler. And then I'll select, oh, I think I did that backwards. I always get confused which order it made. I think I just made the decoupler the root part. Yeah, I did. I made the decoupler the root part. That's not what I want. I want the engine to be the root part. So we'll try it in the other order. Click the engine, then the decoupler. Okay. Back to uh, the select tool here. Yes, so now the engine is the root part, and there's still an attachment point at the bottom of the engine. So now I'm going to get out the subassemblies menu, and I'm going to grab... Uh, this satellite. There we go. And we're going to drop it into our subassembly drop zone. And we're going to name this Interplanetary Relay. I would also recommend that you save the craft normally before doing this in case something gets botched up and then you can go back. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our other vessel. You know, this is only partially built, but I do have my attachment point where I want to put my satellite. So I'm going to go back to the subassemblies menu. I'm going to select my interplanetary relay, and just you just click it on like a normal part. There we go. We can even rotate it around like a normal part. Yeah, rotate that. All right, and there it is. Ugh, it's kind of glitched into the. Support tower, I don't like that. But uh, we'll fix all that later. There's obviously a lot of work still to be done on this vessel, and it will be featured in a future episode. But uh, right now, why don't we get ourselves to our docking hub? It felt to me that this thing had been in the building queue forever. And so I ended up looking into my video archives that I keep, and it was actually uh, 25 game days ago that I first pushed this thing into the building queue. So yeah, it's been a long time, though to be fair, there have been some instances of vessels that have been pushed ahead of it in the priority. Um, it was also expensive. This thing cost over 100,000 curb bucks for me to build. A lot of expensive parts and a lot of new parts, that's why it took so long to build. Um, and that's pretty expensive for an unmanned vessel. But anyway, let's uh, pop the fairing here and get a look at this thing. Alrighty, so let's zoom on in here. Um, for, oh, oh, I got a chunk of that fairing cowling stuck in there. <laughs> Spinning it doesn't seem to want to dislodge it. Okay, that's not good. And go the other way. No, it doesn't seem to want to shake. Okay, well, anyway, uh, I better find that communitron antenna because I'm going to be out of range of the short range dipole antenna pretty soon. And Remote Tech's going to shut this thing down. There it is. And I don't like the way it's glitching through the fairing, but I think it should be okay. I, don't, I think these pieces are pretty much physicless. It just looks bad. Yeah, shaking it doesn't seem to want to dislodge this thing. Okay, time to circularize here. 
See if that gets it to go away. Still got that fairing. Oh, oh, it's drifting back. Is it going to come off? Nope, it's stuck there. Okay, oh well, let's uh, go. You know, one thing I could do, I know, is uh, if I leave the vessel and come back, I know that fairing will be gone, that, that piece of cowling. But I kind of want to um, dislodge it naturally rather than using the game mechanics. I think I think this is something that can sort of, you know, fairings can foul up in real life. You can start to get a look at the docking hub there. Um, I built it out of uh, fuselage parts. Uh, I really liked the use of the fuselage parts and obviously some of the translation tools were also used to try and get them to sort of be inside each other like this. And there's a total of six docking ports on this hub so it'll give me lots of locations to dock ships to and to attach future pieces of the space station to. We're getting, getting close to the point where I'm going to get rid of the our, our, uh, our ascent vehicle, our, our, ah, the lifter, that's the word I'm looking for. There we go, okay, periapsis is now at 50 kilometers. Let's transfer the extra fuel out of the lifter into the orbiter, stage, engage and go. Oh. Hey, I lost the fairing. There goes that last piece of fairing. Excellent. Okay, now that we got a stable orbit, let's take a look at our docking ports. Most of these docking ports come from homegrown rockets. Uh, they're the 1.25 meter parts, but I really love these uh, docking probes that you can extend. I'm a sucker for animations in any, any part, but I'll do this one up here. I love that. I love that little little animation, little docking, little uh, docking probe that comes out. You know, so that the uh, you can have the docking ports come in a male and female variety. This one obviously being the male piece, as this is a family show, I won't go into it any further than that. I also have the uh, Clampatron Juniors on here because that those are the only docking ports that are on the station right now. So I need Clampatron Juniors in order to you know uh, connect this thing. And also the Corines of Clampatron Juniors on it. At the bottom here, I have a large storage tank. The very bottom, that big 2.5 meter part is actually a big storage container. Um, it's got tons of part goodness that you'll see soon enough. Yeah, those HDR docking ports are really neat, and they're completely compatible with the stock 1.25 meter Clampatrons. I could have used those just as easily, but I, I just like I like the little docking probes and the docking probes are just for looks you can dock two males together if that's your thing or dock two females together all of that doesn't really matter okay so we performed our rendezvous and are getting ready for docking which you've seen lots of times before though this time it is a little bit different I have a, a kind of an unusual configuration because I want to take that docking port that's at the bottom and dock that so I'm going to select that bottom uh, Clampatron Jr. as the control from here. So uh, it's not along the axis of the vessel as you can see. So that makes things a little bit weird. And we'll obviously use docking alignment indicator as well. And of course, you've seen dockings before. We're going to put the orange target into the white crosshairs. I want to think about rotation because sort of those long docking ports, you can see I have two long pieces of fuselages that come out further than the other four. And, and the reason I did that is because I'm thinking in the future, I'll hopefully have shuttles and space planes coming up here and they need to sort of, I'm hoping that'll be long enough that you can get in a larger vessel like that. So I got to think about how do I want this rotated and I don't think I want it rotated the way it is right now. No, I think I'm going to rotate it around. Get the orientation to be at 90 degrees on the docking alignment indicator. That way the long pieces are not going over where the hatch of that hitchhiker can is. 
right? Because I don't want to end up docking some future space plane and having it hanging over where the, the hatch to get into the hitchhiker is. If you take a look at the green crosshairs on the docking alignment indicator, you can see that horizontal one is oscillating up and down. There's a fair amount of oscillation here, and that's that's not surprising. The reason is is because uh, most of the mass is in, of course, the vehicle, not in the docking hub, but it's the docking hub that's the center of control. Not only is most of the mass in the vehicle that's carrying the docking hub, all the control mechanisms are in there. All the RCS can or thrusters are down in there, and the reaction wheels are down on the vehicle. So nothing is close to where the actual center of mass really is of this thing. So everything's a little bit wonky, but nothing we can't handle. Okay, we are within 10 meters now of our docking port. Let's shut down this main engine. Get that out of the way. And the biggest issue is going to be uh, stability once this thing docks. Because uh, obviously the 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 two vessels are perpendicular to each other, but actually more significantly, whoa, 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 why did the camera just do that? I don't understand. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> We're good. Uh, more, more importantly, um, the reaction wheels, the axes of the two sets of reaction wheels are going to be perpendicular to each other. And if you want to see, you know, some fun, if you call it that, uh, dock two things together with perpendicular uh, reaction wheels and watch them fight it out over who gets to orient the craft. So I got to make sure that I'm quick with uh, disabling the reaction wheels on the uh, on my vessel that's got the docking hub. I am now less than a meter and a half away, but I am pretty much exactly lined up. So I think what I'm going to do is just get ready to disable these reaction wheels ahead of time. They're right in there. There we go. Just get ready to hit that disable button. As soon as the... Oh, there you go. Disable. Oh, beautiful. Nice. It is done. Excellent. Looking better already. All right. Now we're going to get Bill out there to start uh, attaching on some struts and really stiffening this thing up. So Bill is heading straight for this Kerbal Inventory System container. The large container at the back of this vessel, because that's where all the goodness is. See, I just got to get close enough. There we go. Let's open it up. There we are. And what I really want are these strut endpoints. You can see I got some other things. I'll get to those as well. I only got room for three of them. Okay, so we'll, we'll head on out. And actually, the strut endpoints work exactly the same way as the KAS fuel pipes work, those fuel uh, valve endpoints as well. Uh, all you need to do, you need to have a tool, then you need to have an engineer, and uh, all you need to do is attach them. Now, when you go to attach things, this is just, uh, it's the same as in the vehicle assembly building. If you want strength, you want to make triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these strut endpoints and attach it to the underside of this um, fuselage part, right in behind where the red light is, I think. Right about there. Oh, oh, spinning. That spinning, by the way, is there to simulate, because if you actually turn a wrench in space, um, you will spin the other way. That's why they have, that's why KIS has the Kerbal spinning. And I'm going to attach the other end down here, and so that's going to create you know, an, an angled connection, a little triangle across the docking port. By the way, whenever you're doing this, don't, oops, I dropped it. <laughs> don't ever connect across two docking ports or two flimsy connections. Um, I think, there we go. That will create mayhem. <laughs> I've learned that one the hard way, so I'm just passing that information out to you. Um, if you cross, if you put a strut across two docking ports, there seems to be some sort of tension inside the strut, uh, like a pull force. And if it's across too flimsy of a connection like you would get with two pairs of docking ports, um, you get yourself into trouble. Anyway, we're going to take this other one 
This is a bit of a not quite as good an angle of a triangle, but it's going to work for us anyway. So we'll attach it down here. Here we go, H, and there it is. And then we'll right click on it and link. There we go, that's two. Altogether, we're going to want to have four to stiffen this up nicely, but uh, you sort of get the idea. So we'll just cut to Bill's completion of the final strut. And then we'll take a look at uh, what other toys were brought up for him to play with. Okay, so we're going back to the main container. Again, right click, open up the inventory. And inside the main container, I have smaller containers. Um, yeah, and you can see that they go right on Bill's back. And uh, by the way, the weight of this thing is simulated. <laughs> So Bill becomes a little bit more awkward to uh, to control. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down to uh, a pair of clamps that are on the side of the space station. Actually came up with the original Karayan way back. I had these clamps on there. I had these smaller containers unlocked for a long, long time. I just never got around to bringing any up. So these are going to be external containers. Let's take a look at Bill. Oh, Bill is having himself a grand old time. Excellent. Okay, so we'll put the container on here. All we have to do is grab it. I don't think we grab it from the back. No, we don't. We grab it from the inventory, put it over the, um, the uh, clamp, and let it go. And there we go. Now we have a container. And Bill can now open up this inventory. And we can start storing stuff in here, like these explosives that Bill has been carrying around all of all this time. We can now store them in there, and of course we can store all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to take all kinds of junk and start storing it into these external containers. Um, well, here's this this communitron, this extra communitron that's been sitting here sillily on the side of the station. We can now grab that. There we go, and we'll drag that into Bill's inventory. And then we can go up, we can open the inventory for the container, and then we can put that in the container. That's great. So now it's nice out of the way. And of course, we're going to take, uh, I have extra strut endpoints I brought up. We're going to bring those along. Uh, pipe endpoints, I got. Uh, I brought some extra pipe endpoints, so now I am able to make three different pipes. We'll store those in there. So nothing's going to be stored inside anymore where some Kerbal might mistakenly... Uh, head off with it. We're going to store everything nice and safely on the outside. And I have one more container to go on to the clamp that is on the other side. Okay, come on. There it goes. All right. And of course, we're going to we're going to fill this one up too. And then once we got those all filled up, what we'll do with all our stuff, we'll get everything transferred over. We'll get Bill back inside and notice that this station has been listing. So we'll uh, we'll fix that. Okay, so let's uh, let's push this thing over and get it oriented north-south once again. There we go. And you can see as we're doing this, it's moving slowly because it's a pretty massive thing on only one set of reaction wheels, but you can see no wobble. That's despite the big sort of pendulum bob that's still stuck out there at the end, the long end of the docking hub. But, unlike in the past, everything is nice and stiff and secure thanks to those KAS struts. I think this is going to form a good base for me to keep building upon. But uh, that's going to all have to be for future episodes. I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.